Let's have a look at another ATX power supply. Um, so this is one of the Hall of Shame, uh, which was 16 faulty power supplies. Uh, you asked people to vote which one they wanted fixed next. And we, we're working our way through them quite well now. So um, we thought we'd look at this one. If you uh, want to vote for any of the ones remaining, I'll link the list from the uh, video, on the comments from this video. And, and yeah, go have a look at the list. And if you want something else fixed, let me know and I'll get onto that one. So. This one, I made a note that the 12 volt is low, yeah. Um, looking at the power supply, it's got a 24-way ATX on this one. Um, one thing I've actually learned myself while I've been working through these power supplies is often an easy way to tell which voltage rail it's checking to regulate. So it monitors one of the voltage rails normally. And then the idea is that when that voltage rail is set right, all the others must be right because you know the ratio between the voltage rails is fixed. Yeah. Um, and what I've noticed now is that it's fairly easy to check which voltage rail is being checked by looking for two wires going into one of the connections, either on the orange, the red, or the yellow. Okay. And on this one, you can see that there's a brown wire going in with the orange here. And this wire is the sense wire. So we know this power supply is sensing uh, the 3.3 volt supply. Another thing that tells me is this power supply might not work properly without a load on that 3 volt supply, depending on the power supply design. But I've been caught out, and if you've been watching some of my other videos, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from uh, here. So this is something I've learned and something you should keep in mind. Check to see which voltage is being monitored that will give you you know a good idea before you start looking at it okay so let's just connect the analyzer first to this and let's see what it's doing i've connected the uh power supply up uh, to the little analyzer uh, i mean we could just use a multimeter and uh, short the green wire to one of the black wires to start the supply and use a multimeter but this, these things are like very cheap for moment okay so i've connected this as usual via the light bulbs so this is just to limit the amount of power that can go in here if it was a short circuit the light bulbs would come off basically um so that's a, a way to protect everything i know it's been switched on before but I, you know i just do this every time if you do it every time then you won't forget one time yeah um this is the analyzer uh, so we could use a, a multimeter uh, and just start this by using a bit of wire to connect the green to one of the black wires and then this would start up and we could measure the voltages okay um so i'm going to just uh, power this on first there's no load on it and let's see what this actually does yeah let's see what we get out of it see if the 12 volts is actually low on this one okay so switch it on and yeah the 12 volts is leading 11.3 so this does have a low 12 volts the so 3.3 is correct so we have a low on the 12 volts. I'll just zoom down, actually. So you can see the voltage we have there, yeah? And, and the, the, the uh, 12 volts is low. I am going to put a load on this. Uh, and just to mention, why do we have a sense wire going down to the ATX connector, yeah? What, why do that? Because there's 3.3 volts inside the power supply. So why does it need to monitor the voltage here? Why does it need the sense wire? Why can't it just monitor it internally? And the answer to that is yes, it could monitor it internally, internally, but there'll be some voltage drop down the wires themselves. You know, when you're drawing current, a wire doesn't have zero resistance. It has some resistance. And this can supply 18 amps down this, this uh, wire, these orange wires, yeah, all connected together. So even a very small resistance would cause a voltage drop. Um, you can work it out with ohms law but you know even like you know a tenth of an ohm is, is going to cause a considerable voltage drop down the wire uh, obviously it's not as high as that i mean that it wouldn't even work at that but that's why you sense the voltage here so that you can compensate for the voltage drop on these orange wires you know what the voltage is at this point it enters the board yeah and that's why now because this is monitoring the 3.3 it may be that effectively because there's no load on the 3.3 the power supply is kind of throttling back the the Portsmouth modulator so as not to put too much voltage on there and as we saw this quite drastically if you watched um, 
the uh, last video repair I did, yeah, which completely fooled me. Because all the voltages were like 4 or 5 volts lower than it should be, or on the 12 anyway. So first thing I'm going to do is put a load on this. I'm going to connect a, a 2 ohm resistor. You've seen this if you saw the other videos. To the 3.3 .3, and let's see what that happens on the 12. Okay, so I've now connected the load on here, yeah. Um, I'm going to switch it on. I'm actually going to switch the limiter off now. In fact, it was off. It was on live. That's a mistake I made earlier, okay? <laughs> something else to watch out. So that's another reason something might go bang. Yeah. Make sure your limiter switch the limit. Okay, so uh, apart from that, a bit of a silly mistake. But let's see what happens. So I'm going to switch it on now with a load. I'm going to measure the 3.3 .3 on the meter. So I'm connecting here from the orange and black, yeah. Which is where the load's connected. And let's see what the analyzer says now. So we'll switch this on. Okay, in this case we still have 11.4 on on the 12 volts, and I consider that to be a little bit low. I mean, there is some tolerance. The 5.1 instead of 5, that's good enough. Um, let's have a quick look inside this and see if we can see anything that might be causing that to be low. Okay, so it's opened. Uh, very dirty, but that's not unusual, these power supplies. Um, first thing I noticed, this one's obviously been made very cheaply again. So we can see around here where it should have filters, inductors, and capacitors. And they're just not fitted, they've just got wire links bridging them out. Yeah. So they kind of thought, oh, shall we, you know, filter out any maze interference? Nah, that's going to cost, like, you know, a few cents or something. Yeah. And uh, this is rated, I mean, it's like a 400 watt supply, so it says. Uh, 420 watt, yeah. And it's saying like 18 amps on 3.3, 30 amps on 5, 19 amps on 12. I mean, looking at this, there's no way, there's no way this can handle that sort of power. Um, I'm sure if we looked at the rectifiers on this, we'll find they probably even aren't rated at that power, yeah. So this is a kind of one of these others, you know, it's, it's not what it says it is, really. I don't know how to get away with it, actually. This is like, you know, it's like rant. I mean, if, if you go to a pub in the UK and you have a pint of beer, there's going to be a pint of beer in that there. It's not going to be 500 mils or 480 mils. It's going to be a pint, what's like 560-something mils. It's going to be right, yeah, because somebody checks it. But with this, it's like... Um, it seems to be like just stick whatever rating you want on there. <laughs> That's the way it seems to me. That, you know, where's the weights and measures guy when they when they specify this? It's like stereo amplifiers, yeah, 120 watt. They like 20. Uh, anyway, rant over. Let's see if we can do something with this. So let's clean all the, the dirt off and let's have a, a look to see if any of the capacitors look a bit distressed to start off with. That would be a very good place for us to start. Okay, so that's clean now, um, at least, or fairly clean, yeah. Um, so we can see all these capacitors here now. Just a last bit of dust off them, there you go. So these all visibly look good. It doesn't mean they are good, but they do visibly look good, yeah. So I don't actually see any uh, problematic looking capacitors in here. Um, so <coughs> I'm thinking, uh, next thing I want to try, I'm just going to again put a load on this power supply and this time i'm going to connect my load on the 3.3 .3. i'm going to connect a id hard drive or a couple of them to the 12 and 5 just to see then what voltage i'm getting out of this on the 12 volts okay i've got a couple of hard drives um this is an ide uh, this is another hard drive just out of interest this is a 82.3 gigabytes that i took off a board that i was repairing the other day yeah and out of interest um this is sata but it also has like an id a molex power connector and i have, I have to say i've never seen that before i've never seen a hard drive like that it has both uh, the uh, sata power connector and the molex although it is a sata drive it must have been like made on the transition i guess between you know sata and, and ide interesting though yeah Quite interesting though. Okay, let's uh, have that. That came off the PC, which was the uh, LG, LGA775. And uh, I had a bent pin in the socket, the one that I repaired a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we have that on there. 
we've got some loads let's connect our resistor as well and then let's see what this does okay so once again i've got it all connected up now with the two hard drives the analyzer uh, i've got the meter probe stuck down here they connected to this two ohm resistor uh main reason i'm measuring the voltage on the 3.3 is just so I know i've actually got a proper connection there yeah i can just as easily measure across the resistor um so okay uh, we're ready to go let's put some power into this one and let's see what it does now see if we've still got these low voltages okay so uh, let's give that a try now it's reading 11.8 um i haven't got the four-way connector plugged in so let's just uh, stick the uh, four pin connector in here yeah well, let's just again test that yeah we've now got like 11.7 11.8 and that's within tolerance 11.7 11.8 um this is a good power supply um it's just that without a proper load on it wasn't giving the correct output as uh, simple as that um so i think we can just declare this one as working yeah not not repair but working okay that's another nice uh, quick video um so let's go and uh, have a look at something else see you all soon guys